Okay, so this is going to be video uh, PowerPoint number two, basically the uh, just the large intestines portion of chapter 17. So uh, the large intestines is going to start at a junction between the small intestines and the large intestines. So just a little reminder, this is the last slide of the, the small intestines, and it talks about how the ileocecal sphincter uh, is what is the sphincter that separates the small intestines, the ileum of the small intestines, from the area where basically the uh, cecum of the large intestines start. And we'll talk about that. So the large intestines is uh, named because of its greater diameter. Um, it is shorter than the small intestines, but it is just larger as far as the diameter of the actual tube. This is the last station along the um, along this uh, alimentary canal. All right, so as it uh, closes, it ends with an opening uh, called the anus. Um, it doesn't have a lot of absorptive uh, duties. Um, the main one is water. It's going to absorb the majority of water that enters into it will be reabsorbed. Uh, but it also absorbs electrolytes and some vitamins. Uh, again, electrolytes are simply ions, so calcium, uh, potassium, sodium, various things like that uh, will, be, um, will be absorbed uh, through the large intestines. Um, but as it's doing that, what it's going to do is it's going to form uh, what we will officially call feces. So when we eat something, as we chew it in our mouth and uh, dissolve um, saliva into it, it becomes what is called a bolus. As we swallow the bolus, it gets into our stomach and as gastric juice mixes with it and it starts uh, the process of chemical digestion, it is then called chyme. It is called chyme all the way through to the large intestines to where as the water and these electrolytes get pulled out of it, now we form feces. So this is the last, um, the last name of our waste products. Now the large intestine is going to consist of the cecum, the colon, the rectum, and the anal canal. And so the cecum, which is the first part, is a, a small pouch uh, again, if you're um, looking at where the small intestines comes in and joins the large intestines, there is a short little pouch um, called the cecum, and off of it is where you'll find the appendix. Um, now, remember, the, the appendix is basically a, a lymph node inside the large intestines, and it will help with immune uh, responsibility, train some of the white blood cells, and kind of helps regulate the bacteria that's in your large intestines. Then we go to what's called the colon. The colon is going to have um, four different parts. The first three are relatively well named. The part that goes up is called the ascending colon. There's going to be a part that goes across called the transverse. This is named from the uh, plane that we looked at way at the beginning of 210. Transverse plane cuts across. So transverse or horizontal is going to generally mean something that cuts across the body. And then it's going to turn and go down. At that point, it's called the descending colon. Those are three that should be relatively easily named. Uh, the fourth is called the sigmoid colon, and this is where it makes a sharp little S shape to it. And since the descending colon is on the left lateral side, this is, as I described in, in, uh, in my lab, that this is going to take and, and take that airplane, which is offline and redirect it to the middle of the runway, which we'll just say is that midline thing uh, that is the next part called the rectum. So the sigmoid just kind of helps this little S curve to get in line with the rectum. Now the rectum is a short little portion that's going to end with the uh, anal canal, and the anal canal opens up uh, as the anus, uh, and there's an internal and external anal sphincter. Uh, I do want you to know the internal anal sphincter is involuntarily controlled. This is what your body will uh, kind of tell you, all right, it is time to go. And then the external anal, anal sphincter, which is voluntarily controlled, is what allows you to get to where you need to go in order to go. 
and it wouldn't make sense if it was any other way. Uh, internal is the first little uh, reminder, and then uh, the external is what we control to make sure we're at the right spot. This is a picture of those. Uh, you can see right in the middle, uh, it'll say where the ilium is. It points to where the small intestine comes in. So below that is the, called the cecum. Then we have the ascending colon up on the left side. We're going to have a, a little twist uh, where then we're going to have the transverse colon that cuts across. And then on this right side here, which is the left side of the body, we're going to have the descending colon and then that uh, sigmoid colon where it makes this little turn. Now, some of the things you can see here uh, on the right-hand side of the picture, about midway, just above where it says descending colon, there's a thing called teni coli. Uh, this is a, a muscular band that is kind of uh, protruding on the large intestines, and it's what kind of bunches up uh, the large intestine and these little uh, pouches called hostra. And if you look below where it says descending colon, uh, it's the first one first thing there. It's pointing to those little pouches. So the teni coli is a, a band of the muscularis which is helping to kind of just like the rugae or wrinkles inside the stomach that the hostra are kind of pouches along the large intestines which allow for a, a, a little bit of expansion as it goes through. Now this is a picture of the final uh, portion with the rectum and then the anus which is the outer opening the last little bit. So uh, again, uh, they've got an external and internal anal sphincter. Remember the internal anal sphincter is the one that is involuntarily controlled. You've got your autonomic nervous system that's going to tell you when it's time to go. And then the external anal sphincter is what you hopefully have control over to make sure you get to where you need to go. Uh, babies have not learned it and elderly people sometimes forget that one. So that's that. Now, um, the, the small intestines, as it says here, is going to have the same four layers as the, um, as the rest of the alimentary canal. Um, there, that doesn't have villi. There's no finger-like extensions, and there's no placea circularis, which is the, the ridges that go around. Again, those were all designed to increase surface area because the surface area was vitally important in the small intestines because that's where the majority of the absorption is going to happen. And we needed those placea circularis and the villi to swish through that very watery um, chyme at that point to kind of mix with the, the final enzymes to break things down to their very basics and then absorb them. And here, again, all I'm really worried about is water. So I don't need that. All I need is some, some canals, little tubes, like little drains that help it um, help that water escape. Uh, now the longitudinal mus muscle, which is one of the layers of the muscularis, um, gets organized into what we just looked at in the picture called teni coli. Um, and those bands will create those pouches called hostra, which we were just talking about. And as the, as the large intestine basically rings out and squeezes and pushes out that water, um, we then form what we call feces. Now the large intestines has a little to no digestive function. It's going to contain glands along it that are mainly goblet cells to secrete mucus. And this is a very um, important thing still all along the way. Uh, it, mucus, as it says here, is really the only significant secretion in the large intestines. There's not uh, much in the way of digestive enzymes that are doing it because most of, the, like I said, the small intestines is kind of the one that's doing all the work. Um, it's going to absorb the majority of water that enters it. Like it says here, 90% of the water that enters it is going to be reabsorbed. Uh, again, if it's not, if something's happening and, you know, have to go to the bathroom, you have diarrhea, it's watery because it doesn't spend time in the large intestines. Our body's trying to get rid of something. Uh, it also absorbed electrolytes. There's going to be uh, intestinal flora, as it's called here, uh, which are vitally important. They're going to help uh, produce different vitamins. Vitamin K, B12, and thiamine are all about, uh, we have to have our, our flora in there um, to help create those. Um, and remember, whenever you hear vitamin B12, you should always think intrinsic factor. All right, so the large intestines, as we say, forms the feces, it removes the water, 
and finally is going to get rid of things which we call defecation. So the movements of the large intestine are similar to those of the small intestines. Um, they are, as it says here, slower and less frequent, uh, but when they do, they move. Right? So there's uh, some mixing movements. It's mostly peristalsis. Um, the, uh, as it says here, peristaltic waves produce strong mass movements, which usually follow meals. Now, this is one thing I'm just going to point out. I try to tell everyone this, that if you've got kids and they ever uh, wonder, like if you go out to eat, and these are little kids, and they, you ask them, they have to go to the bathroom, they have to go to the bathroom, and they constantly say no, and then once the food gets there, then boom, they got to go to the bathroom. It is because... At that point, they haven't trained their digestive system, and as soon as peristalsis happens and starts in the mouth, it's going to make the whole system start having peristaltic moves, which is going to make the, the child have to go to the bathroom. So uh, just to give you a little FYI on that. Now, finally, you're going to have this defecation reflex, uh, which is going to cause the internal sphincter to relax, and then, of course, the external anal sphincter where you get to go where you need to go. Now, I'm not worried too much about um, this, but understand that most of feces is still water. Even though the majority of water is, is absorbed, uh, reabsorbed, um, it's still mostly water. Um, it's going to have bad odors. I'm not worried about the reasons it has bad odors, but I do want you to know on this that it's mainly water is the, the thing. I would also know that bile pigments are what it gives um, gives feces its color.